Our first topic is the topic of what is aerospace engineering? Welcome back. My name is Dr. Peter Hollingsworth. I'm a senior lecturer in aerospace engineering here at the university. And today we're going to talk about topic number one, what is aerospace engineering? I'll leave you to think about this for a second. So, what is aerospace engineering? To understand that question, first we must ask, what do the words themselves mean? So what is aerospace? And conversely, aerospace is typically made up of two fields, aeronautics and astronautics. Let's di dissect these words. Aero, which is in the atmosphere, and astro, in space. And nautics is the uh, travel through or building of things that travel through uh, air and space. What about engineering? Take a second to think about what you think of when you think of an engineer. Is it someone who builds something? Is it someone who maintains something, operates something, designs something? What if I were to say that it's all of those? In the classic sense, an engineer designed, built, operated, and maintained its a device, whether it be a bridge, or a wall, or a building, or a locomotive, or an aircraft. In fact, in North America, because of that tradition, train drivers are known as engineers, because when early railroads were built in North America, the engineer was in charge of operating and maintaining, and in some cases, designing and building those locomotives. So we think of engineering in the modern sense as the art or science or practice of taking something from nothing to create an artifact in the end. What is that artifact? Well, it could be something as simple as a bolt or as complex as the air transportation system. So think about the two together. You have aerospace and engineering. We are going to create artifacts that operate and fly through and travel through air and space. What makes aerospace engineering different from other engineering fields? Think about this. Is it, are we more complex? Do we design bigger things? Is it more expensive? Is the cost of failure higher? Well, let's think about some fields. What about mechanical, electrical, or civil engineering, and etc.? Obviously, um, our parts move, and they travel, and they have bits that change shape, so it's probably not the same as, say, a civil engineer building a building or a static bridge. But what about drawbridges? What about electrical engineering? Well, aerospace systems use lots of electronics and electrical components, and our modern systems use electrical and electronic transmissions, so the small UAVs are all electric. We have gears. We have fluid. So what is it that makes us different? Is it the whole? Is it that sum? And why are we different? How about other fields? Non-engineering areas. What about medicine? How are we different from medicine? Or semiconductors? In Intel and semiconductors, a new plant will cost you five to 10 billion pounds. That's similar in size to an engine program. Um, what about expertise required? So those are the things we need to think about and we'll talk about the rest of this unit and in your other units. And what I'll tell you is, in many cases, you will find that this aerospace engineering is substantially the same as these other engineering and non-engineering areas. But in other cases, when we put the sum, the irreducible sum together, it will be unique. One of the areas that is unique is our flight mechanics area, which we're going to talk about a lot more in the coming topics. some things you want to avoid in aerospace engineering. Obviously, this is not a good outcome for the aircraft or the pilot. Or how about this? Definitely don't want that to happen. The airlander, if you aren't familiar with it, was a is a 
airship program based in the UK, and it had the propensity to do this on many flights. In fact, its crash rate, or accident rate, was substantially higher than almost all other forms of transportation, even in the prototype stage. Now, luckily, uh, no one was hurt in any of these incidents, um, but it does take away confidence from the program. So I want you to watch what happens here. This is a standard military cargo drop. However, not everything will go as planned. As we see, the drogue chute comes out, the cargo is deploying, coming down, no problem, and then snap. So why do you think this happened? What is it about this drop that an engineer could have anticipated or designed better? What is likely to have happened is that when the main chute deployed, it overstressed the cables. Why might that be the case? That's one of the things that you'll want to try to think about as you learn these methods and techniques over the next several years. Here's a short video clip from the flight test of the McDonnell Douglas MD-80. Watch what happens. Now we'll watch it again, and I want you to think about why the tail would fall off. What is it about the design of the aircraft that might be different or wrong, or the way it's flown? Again, these are things that you will think about. Okay, I'll leave you with some parting thoughts. The natural state for aerospace engineering is failure. Don't be afraid when things don't work, but be able to learn from it. Also, make sure you fail early. Fail often, but do it when it's cheap, not when you have 160 passengers on board, but when you're testing a small component or when it's a UAV. Try stuff with subscale, understanding how it may scale up to the real thing, and make sure that you learn and understand what each failure tells you. There's an old adage in engineering that we learn more from one failure than a thousand successes, but we need to make use of those. Also, I will give you another thought. Make sure you can learn from other people's failures instead of just your own. Also remember that just because it worked the last time doesn't mean it will work the next time. Success might just be serendipity. Every time you get on a system, you need to understand why you're confident that the fact it worked last time increases your chance of it working this time. Next topics and next area, we're going to go over a very abridged history of aerospace engineering. We're going to go through the pioneers of flight and atmosphere, the pioneers of space, and then we're going to talk a little bit about what I call my artifacts of importance. And we'll do that both at the start of this topic and again at the end of the semester, at the end of the topics. And the reason why we're going to do it in both places is we're going to give you a little bit of a heads up of what's coming and then allow you to reflect at the end. For those of you who are interested in pre-reading, and I highly suggest you do this, I suggest you read Anderson chapter one. It's not particularly long and it's very well written. So thank you very much. And next topic will be topic number two.